Okay, we are live. Yay! For the first time in months, we are <laughs> live. <laughs> it's like when a when a oldies like rock band has a yes. reunion tour. <laughs> <laughs> We're back. Yeah. Um, but you know, life has yep. been lifing. And oh, now we're sorry. here. <laughs> it's been lifing for all of us. Yes. <laughs> yes. Life has been happening. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, including my really like poor internet connection. So sorry that I just look super grainy for whatever reason. It is <laughs> what it is, I guess. Um, but we're here. We're going to be talking about Poor Miss Finch by Wilkie Collins. Ooh. Ooh, look at your cover. Sexy version? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> it's like one of those covers where I'm like, I don't think that's a character from the book. <laughs> <laughs> like, who is that? <laughs> but um, but it's a lovely cover, regardless. It is. The art is pretty. Um, and it's like, I forgot how to do this. Okay, so we're going to introduce ourselves. Uh, so we'll do our little round table of tell us about you, what you've been up to, uh, maybe share a recent book that you liked or a book that's coming out soon that you're excited about and where people find you on the internet. Hit it. Okay. <laughs> so I'm Taylor. I'm from Page Screen Taylor. Once upon a time, I posted videos. I'd like to get back to it, but, you know, time. Uh, and I usually try to read across the board. So I read a little bit of nonfiction, um, sci-fi, fantasy, romance, classics, historical fiction. Right now I'm on, in my uh, fantasy era. So I've been reading through the Ruin of Kings series. Or no, it's A Course of Dragons series by Jen Lyon. Ooh. And it's... Oh, yeah. Fantastic. If you ever want to hear about like a group of the dumbest people you have ever met <laughs> dating, falling in love, and then trying to stop the world from ending and failing so terribly, um, it's a great series. I'm really liking it. <laughs> love that. Yeah. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Kara. My channel is Wild Book Garden. Uh, I do all kinds of content. The, one of the things I just recently posted was another of our like booktube collab projects that I've been a part of. Um, and I'm reading a bunch of books that are from like lesser known children's awards, like children's and young, young adult, um, which is also going to be what my recommendation is from. Nice. And I also read a lot of everything. I read a lot of fantasy, historical fiction, contemporary, nonfiction. I do sprinkle in some romance and sci-fi. Um, but it's also, I read very broadly in terms of like age range as well. That's something that's very important to me and I keep making book clubs about it. <laughs> um, and my recommendation is A Sitting in St. James by Rita Williams Garcia. Mm. I think it is like, it's so good and I never hear people talk about it. Um, it is very heavy. It's set in antebellum south so like you know it's going to be like very heavy but yeah. um the writing is fantastic and like the characterization and it's like a long book but wow. it's really really gripping and i just think she's such a smart author i just i kind of fangirl about her a little bit she also did the um gone crazy what is it gone crazy in alabama um that series the gather sisters which i feel like a few more people have heard of but it's yeah, I just feel like she's very underhyped. And I also think that, like, I really love Jefferson Sons by Kimberly Brubaker Bradley. Like, that's also an excellent book. But I feel like A Sitting in St. James is cool to recommend alongside it because it's actually by a Black author. Um, mm -hmm. And also, it's actually in print, which is nice. So <laughs> that's my recommendation. That always helps. Cool. And then I'm Julia. Hopefully, you know that because you're on. You're on my channel here. You found me. Um, and uh, most of my social media is under the same name, Shakespeare and such. I also like reading various things. Um, right now, it seems like I'm primarily still kind of in romance and classics and 
um, historical, kind of my, my big three, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> um, and Rebecca and, Ross. Yeah. <laughs> um, and what I just finished yesterday, I recommend the show a little bit more, but I finished volume one of The Rose of Versailles, which is a manga, which I haven't mm. picked up a manga in a hot minute. So it's exciting to be reading that again. And it is so good. It is set in the court of Versailles, like Marie Antoinette, you know, um, and it's drama and romance and politics. Um, and it, well, the novel, the manga centers on like Marie Antoinette and Hans Axel von Fersen, who's a Swedish mm -hmm. guy, um, a Swedish hottie, actually. Oh, he's not just, <laughs> he's a real person. Not he's just a real guy. I know who he is. I know who he is. If you've seen the, um, like, Kirsten Dunst movie, it's uh, mm -hmm. Jamie Dornan. <laughs> that's Hans Fersen. Wait, that's Hans. Jamie Dornan? That, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know. <laughs> Taylor's like, tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> And then um, also a fictional character who is Lady Oscar, who is a girl whose father raised her as his son because he had like five daughters. And then he's like, no, this one's a boy. <laughs> <laughs> but everyone knows she's a girl, but she just like walks around in men's clothing and she's like captain of the guard. And I am obsessed with Lady Oscar. And that's just what I wanted to share. Yeah. Because she's on my mind. The art is beautiful for that manga. Every mm -hmm. time I see somebody share it, I'm like, ugh, just aesthetically. The art is so Very beautiful. Angry. And in the anime, I feel like the art is also so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And also, I feel like what doesn't get talked about, as if I'm in like the circles where people are talking about it, it's like very funny. Like maybe it's just because it's such an old manga like it was published in the 70s um and i haven't read anything else older like that um but like the character reactions of like when they're shocked by something or like you know something weird happens like the way she draws the reactions are so funny to me <laughs> like, it's, it's really good so there's that okay now let's talk a little bit about this bad boy about our book of <laughs> It was originally April and then June, and now <laughs> we're talking about it in September. It's what a fine. year it's been. <laughs> what a year. Um, okay, content warnings for what's in the book. Some of this is likely to come up in conversation. Some of it may not. Um, definitely, like, some xenophobia um, that is sadly, like, period-appropriate type stuff. Um slur for Romani people, definitely ableism and also grief. Um, those are, I think, the big ones. And maybe, and maybe like a splash of gaslighting. A splash of gaslighting, Just a, a sprinkle of racism, <laughs> right. you know. The Victorian recipe. <laughs> the Victorian <laughs> recipe. Um, okay, but tell me about both of you, like your familiarity with Wilkie Collins, kind of a general overview on your experience with this book and the rating you gave it, which reminds me, I have to look up what I rated it because I forgot. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so <laughs> I had not read anything by Wilkie Collins before. Like I have a couple books of his that I plan to read. Um, like I tend to hear about like his spooky stories more. Like mm -hmm. I think Woman in White is like his really well-known one. Um, and I hadn't read anything before this. I didn't really know that he wrote more like drama, romance kind of books like this, which was interesting. And I am very conflicted <laughs> about this book. Um, there were some elements I was like very pleasantly surprised by that I'm sure Julia has discussion questions about, but like, This is one of those books where, like, I can't take my feelings about the ending out of how I feel about the rest of the story. Um, and I actually, I wasn't even, like, super emotionally invested in the characters necessarily. Like, they were all kind of frustrating to me, some mm -hmm. more than others. But I still feel like the ending was 
just it it was something it was something (laughs) um so i gave it two and a half stars like i really was not having a great time by the end of it i was like pretty frustrated um yeah (laughs) (laughs) um i'm going to have to agree with you kara um (laughs) i am also giving it two and a half stars um there's i will say i'm not familiar with wilkie collins much i've heard of the pale lady um but that's about it so this is my first thing by him and i will say some of the like humor in this book was laugh out loud funny for me yeah with mr finch was like really good like the scene with him reading like shakespeare to everyone (laughs) like Like, Um, he would threaten them with it (laughs) (laughs) um so like there are some scenes that are funny and there were times when I was like enjoying it, but like for the m- most part, I like really disliked um, Lucilla. I just, she really got on my nerves and it takes a lot for a female character to get on my nerves. But <laughs> after a while I was like, girl, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh I, God, didn't like, I didn't like Oscar. I didn't like Nugent. Everyone was making the worst decision they possibly could. <laughs> um, yeah. And then the ending just really frustrated me. It's like, what? <laughs> like, I think, too, like, the thing about this book that makes it feel so frustrating is that it's one of those, and I know that, I know people do this in real life, but the the, ele- the level to which the characters in this book create all of their own problems it's yeah. exhausting to me like oscar it's like he <laughs> i mean all of our three main characters had like 47 chances to like fix things and they were like what if i just don't do anything <laughs> like, and just what if cry I make about a, it? scream and make a big fuss of it all yeah, yeah. um what if i, I actively I also... make it worse <laughs> yeah. yeah like i know people say that about wuthering heights which is like also true but I, for some reason, this one feels more frustrating. Maybe because in Wuthering Heights, it's like, you know their personality so well that it's like, of course, you're a hot mess and you're going to do this. Yeah. Like, I don't know. But I agree with Taylor that some of the humor was really great. Um, and I was also pleasantly surprised by the way that Lucilla's blindness was written about. Yeah. Um, considering it's a classic, I obviously am not speaking from experience, but it certainly seemed to be a lot more like intentional and... Um, even though it's called poor Miss Finch and they're always talking about pitying her, like Lucilla does not feel sorry for herself at all. Like she's very confident in herself. And I thought that was cool. Like some things about the ending kind of go against that, but <laughs> for a while there, it was refreshing. So, uh, I'm going to be the dissenter on this <laughs> one. <laughs> uh, I'm going to actually pull a Taylor card and just be like, this was the, they were so messy but it was my kind of mess this time like i was <laughs> up. i was like you guys are all idiots um i actually it's just a flat four i wasn't like super excited but i would reread it like i oh. i like i'm keeping my copy so i liked it enough um it's not like a new favorite and i'd be curious to compare it to other works of wilkie collins because this was also the first one that i've read um but I mean, I said it's my favorite trope, okay? <laughs> Even though he did a really bad job with it, it is still my favorite trope. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I really liked Madame Pertilongo, but we're gonna get mm. the characters shortly. So this is wild to me. I feel like I've never been, have I ever been the one person who was like, yes, while you two were like, no, cause I can't. I don't know. I can't think of one i know i've been the dissenter before maybe with was it heidi yeah but even that one julia and i liked it it was yeah. just that you, you just liked it, it a it lot more, more. I, I i love that book yeah, yeah. i'm trying um, to think i don't know i didn't dislike this book i just you just gave it two and a half stars for <laughs> <laughs> As my I, I, I kind of did just like it, but not all of it. Like the first chunk, I really enjoyed. Like I really liked all of the setup and I even liked Lucilla at the beginning. Um, I 
thought I agree. Nugent was an interesting character. Like, I feel like the first maybe half to two thirds, I don't know, somewhere around there was working for me a lot better. And then we just got like, cause like the whole, the whole thing with the love triangle, like I understand that that is like the main plot, but everybody's decisions around that were so terrible. <laughs> like yeah. the only ones who I think had like a good reason for what they did was Madame Pratolongo and the eye doctor because i'm like yeah. okay it sounds like fake victorian medicine to be like she can't have a shock when she yes. is recovering from <laughs> blindness which makes no sense but if we accept that that is possible i think him yeah. like him deceiving her makes sense and he's like i only care about keeping her safe the rest of y'all can do whatever you want like <laughs> this mess not my job <laughs> yeah. my job is to just help her heal okay that's what i'm here to do yeah I, so I liked Lucilla for the most part up until, like you said, for the first third. And then she was racist. And I was like, I don't know about that. Yeah. Can we but please reason, actually, let's just dive colors. into Lucilla. Let's, <laughs> let's unpack and, this. <laughs> Hit it, Taylor. I, I just, I don't know. Her aversion to dark colors, which apparently all blind people have in this world. Um and she, which she can tell, like when she felt uh, Madame Padalongo's like purple dress, she was like, "Oh, ew!" <laughs> and then, like when her aunt forced her to sit next to an Indian man for dinner, that oh was God. so uncomfortable. Because like, at first, when she's describing it, I'm like, "That's weird," but like, okay, it's just like with fabric or whatever. And then she's like, "And then I had to sit next to somebody who wasn't white," and I'm like, <laughs> "Okay, Lucilla." Like, and she's she specifically tells us like even black people's faces, and I'm like, "Okay, like, stop, <laughs> we got it." Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. and like Bad. her being mad at her aunt being mad for like insulting her friend too. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why my aunt doesn't understand that, like, I wouldn't hate him if he were white. <laughs> I'm like, Lucilla, that's racism. <laughs> like, it's, that's just, it's like the most annoying thing because she treats it like she has this quirky thing about her. She's like, you know my antipathy against dark colors. And it's like, Lucilla, just say that you're racist. Like, And I was saying this previously, like, I just, like, where does she draw the line? Like, what color is too dark for her? Like, would she wear a dress that's forest green or is that too dark? And like, why does it matter if it's a dress or a person? Because fear of the dark and is fear of the unknown, but there's not an unknown in a piece of cloth, Lucilla. Like, right? I just don't understand it. Yeah, like that's, and that's something that we were talking about before, Julia, like, um, because, like, I wasn't sure if you had finished it, Taylor, so I didn't want to, like, spoil anything. Um, but, like, I, when they're explaining, like, when you're afraid at night, like, you wake up and you're sure there's something in your room and you have to, like, you know logically that there isn't, but you still feel like there is, so you turn the lights on to check. And they're like, well, now imagine if you're blind, you can't ever turn the lights on to check. And I'm like, okay. Like, that actually, like, I, that makes sense. That seems, like, mm -hmm. plausible. So, to me, it would make sense if Lucilla was afraid of, like, dark rooms or, like, dark spaces or, you know, like, maybe she always had to have a light on even though she doesn't use the lights. Like, I feel like there was a way to to do that in a way that made more sense and also did not involve racism. <laughs> like, yeah. it just seems so disconnected from, like, like you were saying, Julia, her fear is a fear of the unknown. It's not a fear of a color. <laughs> yeah. And also, how can she tell? Like, we know she has... She gets it wrong! <laughs> like, she gets, like... She, the books mention that she can see, like, light sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, like, it's a dress. How can you tell? Right. Yeah. And she gets it wrong. Like, they even, like, test her a few times. Yeah. And she gets it wrong sometimes. So, like, it doesn't... <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. So and her talking about Oscar and she's like, I'm so glad he's white. <laughs> it's yeah. like, okay. okay. What a relief that they told me his complexion is even more pale than mine. It's like, <laughs> stop. Like, it was weird too, because in the earlier part of the book, I feel like when we were first hearing about it, it was like, 
they hadn't explicitly included people in her issues, so she's just talking about like dark fabric and you know whatever. And I and like the way they kept saying is like she has a horror of dark colors, and I'm like, hmm, this feels a little questionable. But mm-hmm. so far, you haven't like confirmed anything. And then she's like, man, I hate it when someone's face isn't white, and I'm like, oh okay, all right. <laughs> like, <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> Gosh. <sighs> And it's just, I don't know, like, it especially bothered me because, like, on the one hand, initially, kind of, I think, Taylor, you were saying, like, the beginning, she's kind of like this fun character. She's super sassy. She's like, Mm -hmm. go walking with me. We can scope out this hottie. Like, tell me how cute he is. (laughs) And she's, like, openly, like, courting Oscar, which is so fun. Like, she's the go-getter. She's initiating this relationship, which is super cool. And then they just go ahead and introduce this whole element. And I'm like, well, nothing's fun with you anymore, Lucilla. You just pissed me off. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing too. Like as the book goes on, she just gets like meaner and nastier to people in a way that feels like, sorry, my cat is just sticking his head in a bag. (laughs) Um, But like, I don't know the way she treated people near the end, just, yeah the doctor and Mrs. Pratalungo and like to some extent Oscar like I was like Lucilla can you just be polite and maybe it was more frustrating because like I was listening to it on audiobook so I had to hear like the yelling all the time oh yeah and I'm like I I hate that this is a thing because now I feel like I'm insulting a woman for being loud and yelling but i'm like stop stop yeah. yelling at people stop yelling at your doctor yeah, yeah. he's well, like hey and- if you want to see don't take off your mask or your blindfold yeah. like, okay <laughs> he's like he's like absolutely no reading or writing she's like what if i write a journal that's like 60 pages <laughs> like, <laughs> Lucilla. <laughs> like, yeah um i think like the, all three of the main like trio for me, it got more frustrating and less interesting as the book went on. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that's, like, a big part of why I liked the first part better is because, like, I found the characters more likable or more interesting. Um, yeah, like, I, I liked Lucilla at the beginning, and by the end, I mean, okay, I always thought Oscar was, like, kind of wishy-washy, but other than him, I feel like I f- mostly enjoyed the main characters, and like by about the middle of the book, I'm like, you are all exhausting. I don't care. <laughs> like, stop it. All of these <sighs> problems you've created yourself. <laughs> mm-hmm. And like the fact that Oscar like almost tells her multiple times. And I'm like, why are we wasting our time with this? Like, we know he's not going to, but like, I hate... I yeah. hate hearing about him almost doing the right thing. So many times. He's like, well... So many t- uh never mind (laughs) yeah i feel like we're skipping around with characters it's fine um (laughs) with um with nugent i at least felt like i expected the mess from him yeah because like right off the bat he's like yeah my brother squandered all his money he's this artist he's just like this cool charming dude who everyone loves so i was like this is the chaos like this is the walking problem (laughs) But then Lucilla and Oscar just, like, continue. I don't know if it was, like, contagious or I don't know. It's, like, Oscar has, like, all of the willpower of a soggy napkin. Like, he just (laughs) does it. And the personality to match. (laughs) Yeah. Like, he just, he doesn't do anything. And it's, like, we're supposed to feel like he makes this great sacrifice. And I'm, like, it's kind of a non-decision, though. Like, I, I recognize that it was hard for him and he genuinely seems to think that he was doing the thing that was best for Lucilla. But like every every decision he makes before that, it's like he's so, it's not even a decision. He's so passive. All of yeah. them are. I mean, honestly, like Lucilla is probably one who makes the most decisions, but people keep keeping information from her. So she can't make good decisions. Like Yeah. And the thing is too though with Oscar's like decision, it felt like, I don't know, it was just so slimy to me because it wasn't even like, oh, she's like trying to decide between me and my brother and she both knows he didn't like, what's tell going on. He didn't it was tell her. Brother. I was willing to let her think that 
he was his brother. And I'm like, dude, like, that's not even, that's not okay. Yeah. Yeah. At least know who she's marrying. Yeah. I think that's why I don't feel as negatively towards Lucilla, even though she was frustrating. I'm like, well, at least you weren't the one who was like gaslighting people and like lying to them. And like, (laughs) I don't know. Um, like, I, I feel like she had a less active part in her own misfortunes than the two guys did, but. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah, because I feel like even at the beginning, like, <laughs> I feel like this scene really sticks out in my mind, but, like, in the beginning when Madame Protolongo, like, goes to Oscar and it's like, what's your deal? My girl likes you. I got to get, like, the scoop on whether you're good enough for her. And she is just like, grow up. Be a man. You're pathetic. Like she just lays <laughs> into him, and I'm like, "That's it." She nailed him right off the bat. She met the yeah. man once, and she's like, "You're so sad." <laughs> <laughs> and then, like all those parts later, where she's like, "I judged him too harshly," and I'm like, "Not really." Like, no. <laughs> I he's not as bad as his brother, but like, not kidnapping and marrying right. a woman. <laughs> like without her knowing who you are is like that's like the lowest bar like (laughs) you just have to roll over it like yeah the thing with Nugent is like for the first like I I don't know I keep saying like half the book like I'm just estimating it's like about half yeah let's say half for the first half I liked Nugent so much more. I found him so much more sympathetic. Mm-hmm. And I really felt for the way, like, he really is doing everything he can to just, like, remove himself from the situation. Like, he doesn't want to sit next to her. He doesn't try to talk to her. He's like, I'm going to leave, like, the county. And then his brother's like, no, you should stay. And no. obviously he is still responsible for his actions. But I like that in the first part, he seems... For one thing, I just think he's a more interesting character because he has actual, like, motivations. <laughs> I don't know what Oscar's deal is, and he has no personality. Um, Nuja's personality ends up turning terrible, but at least he has one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but then, yeah, by the end, I, like, I was sending Julia a message because I was so mad at Nugent, like zero out of 10. Like what is wrong with him? Like he was trying, like he, he was pulling on Mr. Rochester. He's like, let's just get married before you find anything out. Like, yeah. let's do it. <laughs> piece of shit um, like, are so we bad. doing spoilers now julia oh sure <laughs> i just want to say the end when they finally like un like reveal to lucilla that she nugent or oscar was really nugent and stuff mm-hmm. and nugent is like okay i'll go away but if you have a son name him after me <laughs> and it's like why you haven't earned that <laughs> <laughs> i just can't get over it like Wilkie called it like okay on a scale of like they break up to they find his frozen corpse in the <laughs> Arctic. How hard did you resolve the love triangle? Like I just I can't. I Listen, can't get over that. <laughs> he got me good with that though. I went from Team Nugent just for funsies to yeah. oh my god nobody you're all the worst to in the eleventh hour first like pulled out a gun I was like what I know I know and then it was very anticlimactic but I was like "Ah!" um and then yeah the whole like story of his dead body being found and did he have her like hair or a note or something like that went from zero to 60 but then I was like just kidding I am rooting for you you sad dead man you just (laughs) loved her and she and listen to play devil's advocate here as I've also (laughs) said to Kara about this book like there is literally no point in the story in which Lucilla prefers Nugent. Even when she thinks that he's Oscar, (laughs) she likes him less. And that's so sad. So like, yeah, he might be a little bit twisted. He's like, he's very devastated. So (laughs) I, I do feel bad for him. Like I am simultaneously furious at what he puts Lucilla through and what he's trying to do and also I feel terrible for him because like the number of times when he touches Lucilla and she's like wow I'm dead inside like, I feel just, less than nothing right now it's, it's a bummer it's sad um yeah and I also like that ending is so 
like ridiculous and manipulative, but it does make me feel bad for Nugent. So I guess it kind of did its job, but it really, it gives me like Anthony Trollope vibes when he's yes. like, and now George Vavasor vanishes from these pages. This <laughs> whole book was big Anthony Trollope energy for me. Yeah. yeah. Also, another thing that upset me about the way that Nugent's story ended is just mm -hmm. the way it was told, like, because it's all happening in like the last couple pages of the book, even though we're told that the characters are like mourning and they're sad about it, it feels like they get over it very quickly. Like they're like, oh, bummer. Anyway, <laughs> like they just, they move on so fast. And I just like, I don't know. I, it just feels like such a waste of a character and of a plot line. And it just, mm -hmm. it also, it always makes me angry when authors like set up a love triangle and they write themselves out of it by just like annihilating one of the <laughs> one of the people in it like i i mean like you said julia at no point does lucilla even like tolerate nugent which is like, yeah. really sad but literally still okay before like, we know that yeah. nugent is evil lucilla finds out that nugent's going to visit oscar and she's like no yes <laughs> and i was like okay lucilla come down <laughs> She's pissed to even know that he exists. Like, she doesn't want him. Which is why I think the love triangle is just, like, so dumb. Like, it's a yeah. waste of a love triangle. Because, I mean, on the one hand, Kara, like you were saying, like, to just kill off one of the prospects is, like, the laziest way to end a love triangle. But also, for there never to even be a glimmer of Lucilla even thinking what if I picked Nugent? What would my life be like? Like, yeah. that is where the spice is. And <laughs> he delivered us this flavorless relationship because there was Oscar. never, yeah, just Oscar, the soggy napkin, what you call him? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because it's just like, I don't know. It, it, it would be more interesting if she had briefly fallen for the ruse truly of him being Oscar yeah. or just like being like maybe against him coming and then meeting him and being like huh this isn't what i expected but then like still ending up loving oscar like just give me something just yeah something. and like yeah. i know like we we all have read so many classics in general and like victorian classics in specific like there wasn't ever really a doubt for me that she was gonna pick oscar like oh for sure she, of course she's gonna pick oscar but yeah it should have been so much more interesting to get there and it just wasn't and also like i even those little tiny moments where we're just like hearing the way that nugent like looks at her and obviously she can't see him so he's just his heart is like totally in his eyes and i'm like that that makes me feel something like we should have had more of this i feel like we should have had lucilla like tolerate him <laughs> i yeah. don't know it was just like yeah i i agree i think it was a real like wasted opportunity well it's like the pale lady which we i think was our, yes. our previous one it's like it's it's not even a love triangle because there's yeah. no chance like this is just like the conflict but we all know mm -hmm. what's gonna happen that is yeah. so accurate the way you just said it this is not a love triangle this is just the conflict is that there's another guy who likes her wow put yeah. that on a t-shirt <laughs> this is not a love triangle it's just a conflict <laughs> <laughs> yeah i just i don't know i wanted more because like i'm not a huge love triangle person but when it's done well it's done well and the big part of the love triangle is the fact that the person at the center of it like has doubts about each of them but also has feelings for them mm -hmm. and it's you, there i thought we were gonna get the classic like nugent is like a bad boy he's a bit of a libertine but maybe he <laughs> like, hear it the fact that he paints landscapes could be like interesting like maybe like he describes the landscapes to lucilla or she tells him like what maybe like going outside feels like and he paints that for her, I think would be cute. But Taylor, like, don't give me a taste of something I'll never have. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought the landscape painting thing was going to like play into that. No, um, I should have. But it's no, just the he, reason he goes to the Arctic and dies. <laughs> <laughs> 
men don't go to the Arctic and freeze to death anymore. <laughs> yeah, they should do that more often. Die, die clutching my hair as you are a frozen corpse discovered by another explorer to prove that it's real. <laughs> like, That's romance. Um, yeah. But yeah, like, you'd think you'd get, like, Oscar is the safe choice, Nugent is sort of the wild card, and obviously Victorian morality and such, you go with the safe choice. But, like, there isn't even a choice. Like, one is blue, and the other one kidnapped you. <laughs> um, blue, dumb, dumb. Yeah. <laughs> I do like that when Lucilla has her sight back, that, like, when she sees somebody who also has this, like, skin condition, and she's like, oh, okay, wait, that's fine. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, we could have averted all of this. <laughs> Ugh. And didn't didn't the doctor even say, like, oh yeah, as soon as she can like see that it's different, it'll be fine? And he was right. Why does no one listen to this medical professional? It's <laughs> a great question. They're like, he's just he's German and he eats mayonnaise. Why should we listen to him? <laughs> I know. I can't. I think also about like the ending with Nugent, the thing that like really I think frustrates me on top of just like the plot stuff that happens and like what a waste of a character and a love triangle I think another thing that really bothers me about it is that it makes him feel like it makes him feel like a like a momentary like just speed bump in their like happy love story together and I'm like he's He's your brother. <laughs> he is a whole person who has died, and I like. I just don't like how it's written off. I'm. I don't think I know how to explain this very well. But it just like it gives me this feeling that like he was just a plot twist, and he was. I don't know. I just don't like it. Like I don't love Nugent. I have a lot of issues with him, but I hate the way that like his story ends, and that I feel like Wilkie Collins is trying to make us feel about it. Yeah. Like. I don't know. That makes sense. Okay. Taking a step aside from our three lovers, unless anyone has anything to add about them right now. No, I think sure we're good. Back. Um, I do want to talk about Madame Protolungo because what an interesting <laughs> narrator. Um, I guess technically she's kind of also the protagonist, um, but... I quite like her. I would love to hear your thoughts. Again, it's a non-question. I always just present a <laughs> statement and wait for you guys to extrapolate. Just like sentence uh, thoughts. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, I thought she was interesting. She's um, funny too. Like I, you know, especially in the beginning when she and Lucilla are like walking and they first see Oscar, and Oscar makes like a face at her. <laughs> He gets so insulted, which, by the way, I don't know if they ever explained why he made that face at her, or if it was just because she was old. I think they did, and I don't remember why. It was like I he know. he was, like, mistaken about her. I don't know. I don't remember. I also yeah. don't remember. <laughs> I think um, they address it, but... And her, like, socialist leanings, I think, were really interesting. <laughs> entirely get a feel for how Wilkie Collins felt about her politics. I have a feeling he's not too fond of them. It felt like he was like making fun of her. Yeah, yeah it was great because I feel like he was making fun of her and I was like, she makes some great points. She's like, right, though. Yeah. <laughs> let her cook. <laughs> yeah. Um, I also enjoyed her as a character. And I, yeah, I think it's she's interesting because she's basically the narrator of the story, but she's not the main character, um, which I feel like is, you know, less common. But um, yeah, I, I enjoyed her. I also thought she was very funny. Um, I really actually liked her relationship with Lucilla. Mm -hmm. um, and like, you know, it, it was a little heartbreaking when New, uh, Nugent like turns her against her. Yeah. Um, I will say I could not stand her father. I know he's like not even on page that much, but like that fucking like 
<laughs> calm down, sir. Like, keep it in your pants, like, so that we can, so that we can move on with the rest of the story. Like, every time something interesting was about to happen, she's like, "Gotta go rescue my dad from his trophy wife." Like, <laughs> I couldn't stand him. I no, honestly, I, I will say, like the. Um, Mrs. Padal or Madame Padalongo's like cure for him by taking him to Rome and having him look at all the churches and paintings. <laughs> was he was so like, funny. fine, fine. I won't look at another woman again. Just don't show me another painting. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Yeah, I think anytime that she had to go visit her father or Lucilla had to go to her aunt, I was like, enough of this. I don't want to visit anyone. I just want to get back to the story. Yeah. And I also, I, we talked about this a little already, but like another reason that I think I liked Madame Prado-Lungo so much more consistently than other characters is that I feel like her decision making actually made sense. Like there were times where it's like, I don't think this is a good idea, but I understand why you're doing it in this situation. Like, um, I mean, from the beginning, she was like against the deception. And after that point, she like wants to she wants to tell Lucilla, but she understands about, like, the medical thing. So, I don't know. I just, I feel like she was one of the characters where it's like, I actually understand where you're coming from, so yeah. I don't want to, like, throw my book at the wall yeah. when you're making choices. As opposed to literally everyone else. In this yeah. Book. Well, and it like, feels like she's the only character who has Lucilla's best interests at heart. Yes. Sometimes Lucilla doesn't even have that. <laughs> like, but, like, yeah. you know, everyone there seems to be out for something from Lucilla. Her own father wants, like, money from her. Oscar is too, like, obsessed with his whole woe is me. I have to, like, trick her because I'm not even going to ask her if this is okay. I'm just going to assume it's not okay. And then yeah. you have Nugent, like, I don't know, isolating her from her loved ones and kidnapping her because he loves her. Not even because yeah. she indicated that she even likes him mm -hmm. uh, madame padalungo doesn't really have anything to gain from like encouraging her one way or the other until nugent is like hey uh she's evil um yeah. and i will barely explain it but she is evil trust, Just me. trust, trust me on this one yeah yeah <laughs> I'll explain after we're married, which is not suspicious at all. <laughs> like, I know I've never given you any reason to trust me, but trust me right now when I say this. Yeah. You know, another thing that's annoying about, like, Oscar's treatment causing this entire mess is, mm -hmm. like, it did save his life, essentially. Yeah. And yeah. so why was that not something, like, I even if Lucilla still has her stupid, like, I don't like dark colors thing, like, if it's a difference between like having oscar alive and not like i feel like she would eventually get to the point where she's like you know maybe i miss when he didn't have this like weird skin condition but at least he's not a like not dead yeah. like that just yeah. doesn't for real it's like when they're like would, would you still love me if i was a worm <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> would you still love me if i was blue as opposed to dead because at least then you'd still and have she's me. she's like, I have to think about it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. Let me get back to you. Yeah. Yeah. There was something um, else I was going to oh, say. Go ahead. We were just... Well, no, I'm trying to remember, like, what it was. What, what were you just talking about, Julia? I feel like it was connected to that. Um, Maybe it was something Tina was saying. We were talking about the having... Lucilla's best interests at heart. Yeah. Oh, Mrs. Catalungo being like the only one who seems to consistently right. have her best interests at heart, even if like, yeah, I don't agree with her decisions. Right. Her father. Yeah, I don't remember friends. what it was. Also, if I think if, of it, we can just. If it comes back, you just interrupt us immediately. <laughs> yeah. Um. Any other thoughts on Madame Pretalungo? Yeah, Madame. I keep calling her Mrs. Yeah, that's very familiar of you, Taylor. I know. I <laughs> you know, know her like that. <laughs> I will say at one point, uh, Madame Padalongo is angry at Lucilla when Lucilla's like, I hate dark people. Because she's like, well, my husband was brown. <laughs> she doesn't say anything to Lucilla about it. But she's like, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> no, literally, it's one of the quotes I saved. And it's like wild to me because she says that it's, quote, a little annoying to me on personal grounds because my husband was like mahogany brown or whatever, but I'm like, 
a little annoying. <laughs> Can we get a little more fire? You want to see more for your husband? <laughs> yeah. Um, do we have anything we want to discuss about like the Finch family or Herr Gross or any like side characters? I, I thought her stepmom was like a trip. <laughs> <laughs> the handkerchief, the novel, and the baby. It's like she can only have like two of them at any one time. <laughs> it's the triangle pick two. Yeah. Um, I also love how like at one point Mr. Finch like is like, don't agitate Mrs. Finch, otherwise, like it the anxiety will cause the baby to be malnourished, and then he like prays over her breast milk. <laughs> Like, yeah. <laughs> I also I thought this is one of those this is one of those descriptions where I'm like I can't tell if it's supposed to read this way when like he's he like she, he's like oh no she's having an attack of the nerves like go upstairs and lay down in a bathtub until I come check on you and I'm like what the fuck? Like, <laughs> this is why you have like 27 children like calm down. <laughs> I just I do find it very like interesting because I don't think I've read a lot of Victorian novels with like breastfeeding as like yeah, that's true. um but I do like that she the baby is just always like latched on to her no matter yeah. what. Good for her honestly. Ma'am that's gonna be a very like round baby. <laughs> that's gonna be a robust healthy baby. Congrats. Yeah. <laughs> What was her whole thing about, like, getting dressed? I just remember her, like, having that, like, dressing coat thing. I don't know. I can't remember what she would it's say. It's like she's always, she's got, like, the, her dressing gown just, like, trailing off one arm. Yeah. Like, she's never, like, actually <laughs> wearing all of her clothing at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> like, and, like, several times she just, like, has a boob out. <laughs> As one does. Yeah. Easy access. Yeah. I guess that's why she wears the dressing gown. Is she's like, I gotta feed this baby. I can't be all corseted up. Hello. Yeah. yeah. I did it? like uh, Mrs. Finch though. She was like a very minor character, but like one of the descriptions of her being this like haggard housewife whose husband is like ridiculous and annoying. Um, and like, I don't know. She didn't seem that bad compared to Mr. I Finch. For her. And I she felt, genuinely. Yeah. She seemed to genuinely care about Lucilla more than like her biological dad did. Um, yeah. Yeah. I like Mr. Finch is one of those characters where I'm like, he is written so well. But as a result, every time he's on page, I'm like, I hope somebody just knocks you out. Like, I'm so sick of you. Like, please just make him unconscious so we can shut him up. Like, I couldn't. Why didn't the robbers have gotten to him first? Yeah. <laughs> only. <laughs> Oh, I think I remember what I was going to say. Like, so that thing with, like, when um, they, they first meet Oscar and there's that whole weird thing about, like, why is he acting like this? And then you find out he was almost executed for murder. Like, yeah. like there's, like, so much of this book is just, like, very, like, day-to-day -day life and, you know, like, traveling to London, traveling to Ramsgate. It's like, there's a lot of, like, relationship drama, but the actual plot stuff I feel like it's pretty chill but like at the beginning at the end there's like these two just absolutely batshit things that happen <laughs> like like i i don't and also if all of this does happen like i find it then hard to believe i guess not hard to believe but i find it a little weird that like okay so nugent risks i mean i guess like not i guess he doesn't risk his life but like he he risks a lot to run to his brother's rescue to make sure he doesn't get executed for a murder he didn't commit. Mm -hmm. You know, stand-up guy. But then, like, his his love for Lucilla, who has also not that much personality, is so strong that he's like, what if I just, like, don't care about him anymore? And then Oscar's like, what if I just shoot my brother? And then they're like, oh, no, we're, it's fine. We're friends now. <laughs> like, Except I'll never see you again, and now you're dead. I look forward to hearing about your frozen corpse in the newspaper. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't understand. No, that's a great point. Yeah. 
Very and the thing is, Lucilla didn't even like him that much. So it's not even oh. like Lucilla gave him attention. And so he felt like he had a chance. There was no chance from the beginning. No. <laughs> and he's still like, um, what if I like stole my blue brother's girlfriend? Yeah. <laughs> what like, if I I'm... like kidnap you a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Also, are we supposed to feel like I was I was very unsure of like what we were supposed to get from like that big like confrontation moment where the brothers meet again and he gives uh, Oscar the marriage license in his name. Are we supposed to feel that that was his plan all along or that he was like continuously battling with himself about if he was going to give it to him or not? But he kind of had this idea or that it was like a spur of the moment thing where he's like bad 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 oh i'm good here marriage license i'm dead like what what were we supposed to get from that i kind of read it as the last one where he was like i am just like again walking chaos creating all this mess and then like just had one moment of clarity where he was like oh dang it this is my brother i love i guess i'll do the right thing <laughs> bye yeah <laughs> my assumption was that like he got the marriage license in Oscar's name while he was pretending to be Oscar. So the whole point was that yeah. he was still going to marry her under Oscar's name. Mm -hmm. He gets back to the like hotel room, sees everyone there and knows that they've talked about what happened and went, so I got this for you. <laughs> <laughs> I've been discovered. Here you go. <laughs> Honestly, that probably is what happened. He's like, what a coincidence that I have a change of heart at the exact <laughs> moment I have no other options. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. There's a bunch of geese outside. I don't know if you could hear them. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> um. Okay. Those are my big, I feel like, character groups that I wanted to talk about. Are you guys ready to dive into a couple more plot and theme type things? Yes. Great. Again, they're not questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I definitely want to talk more. Oh my gosh, his little bow. He Sorry. needs attention right now. An angel. Um, I want to talk more about disability in this book because I would love to hear your thoughts. Um, obviously, three of us, none of us are blind to my knowledge, um, but I would still like to discuss like that uh, um, representation, I guess. I, that wasn't the word I was looking for, but it does fit there. Um, and also, I guess like other disability too, because we have like Oscar healing from when he um, was attacked and then um, kind of also compare and contrast to like modern depictions of disability, if you feel inclined. Take it away, whoever wants to talk about that. Um, so I'm not blind and I'm not an expert on blind rep. I will say a lot of it is like handled better than I thought it would be. I still sometimes feel like they keep describing Lucilla as like childish and stuff. And I assume part of it is because she was sheltered, but I'm also like, I don't know. Sometimes they treat her like she is a kid instead of like mm -hmm. an adult. Hence why like none of them share the truth about like Oscar, I think because they see her as a child as well. Someone who is unable to handle the fact that dark people <laughs> exist um, or that, you know, her. her partner, it, you know, is like you know he has been changed by medication that he took to help him uh, but i don't know it, it was, definitely wasn't perfect and i think the book infantilized her a little bit mm -hmm. uh, but i did like that she like didn't really mind being blind like she only wanted to see so she could see her future husband um, and even then she thought he was kind of ugly. <laughs> she's like, this is a little disappointing. I know, she's like, you were way hotter when I couldn't see you. And I'm like, man, just like, Ouch. <laughs> like attack after attack for Nugent. Like he just really can't catch a break. Um, yeah, I, I agree, Taylor. I feel like there were a lot of places that I was very pleasantly surprised by. Um, like even when we're hearing about 
Madame Prada Longo when she first meets Lucilla and she's like rushing to open doors for her and like trying to help and Lucilla's like I got it like I I know where I'm going um which is something you know that I know disabled people talk about today is like you know helping them when they ask is important but don't assume that they can't do anything for themselves Mm -hmm. um also as we were saying I also don't have experience with this so this is just going off of my impressions um but I agree that she is kind of infantilized like the part that really struck me with that was um when she goes blind again and the narration is like oh now she has her innocent sweetness back and I'm like Mm. um and I also I have kind of mixed feelings about the fact that she does end up going blind again like on the one hand yeah she doesn't mind being blind she actually Mm -hmm. is very happy with herself and I think that's great but on the other hand it feels a little bit weird that I don't know like let me think how to phrase this it feels a little weird to me that her her relationship problems are solved by her just like (laughs) not being able to see that like do you know what i mean it feels, yeah. i can't explain why it feels a little weird but it does like <laughs> also, if she I can't see Bento. her husband she is fine or like she can yeah. live and like ignore the fact that he is blue or something right rather than actually like processing it and dealing with it she's yeah. kind of like well out of sight out of mind like, literally <laughs> literally yeah i will say that i didn't I actually kind of like that she was still blind in the end though kind of like yeah. treating blindness as not this like curse or anything right. it's like something that lucilla lived with and she was fine with and had made her like didn't even make her peace with she was just fine with yeah. it um and the fact that like i don't know the narrative didn't f- feel the need to like fix her by the end right of it. yeah i think also part of it that felt weird was that when she was seeing like everybody was kind of trying to make her medical decisions for her Mm -hmm. um and keeping information from her about everything really so i I, maybe that is part of why i feel weird about like the fact that she she is blind at the end because like i also i appreciate that the book doesn't like cure her and that's how she gets her happy ending but i think that one of the things that feels a little off about it to me is that like now that she's blind again it kind of feels like oh everybody was right to you know protect her and to make those decisions for her Mm -hmm. i don't know if that makes sense but yeah yeah Yeah, no no, i feel that yeah it was really interesting to me um, the portrayal of like when she did um, briefly have her sight again and her actually like struggling more mm-hmm. with that new ability than how she had lived her whole life. Because I can't even remember what they were trying to like, like he gave her stuff and he was like, grab the whatever, like find this. And she's like, I don't, I don't know what it is. And then she would close her eyes and be like, oh, it's this thing. Um, because yeah. like, that's just how she had grown accustomed to navigating the world um and then it wasn't like oh now that i can see i'm just like this you know like full capable human it's like no you've given me a problem by like (laughs) making me have to yeah you know learn this new thing um so that's really difficult too because your brain isn't used to processing yeah like like when she's having all the trouble with like depth perception i was like Mm -hmm. yeah like this would take like she would need like tons of like physical therapy or like rehab you know like that's why people have those things um also i think something that was weird about like the timing of like when she could see versus when she couldn't is the fact that like okay so we never actually see her like touch the real oscar when she is blind like after all like or um sorry when she could see is that what I meant? Mm-hmm. Like when they have that big confrontation where everybody's at that like hotel or whatever, and she comes in and she's blind again. And so when she touches Oscar and she's like, oh, it is you. I'm like, well, why, why didn't we have her recognize him 
I guess I guess because then she would have seen his face was different. I don't know. It was just one of those things where I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, again, you kind of just wrote your way around this, Wilkie Collins. <laughs> like, yeah. what if she couldn't feel, tell him? Yeah, It feels like it would have been more meaningful for her yeah. to see him blue and be like, oh, you are the one I love. Like, Right, like she I goes to like, shake Nugent's hand or something, and then she's like, wait, why do you feel like Oscar? Why are you making me feel like Oscar does? Like, that yeah. would have been nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. I also, I think another reason that the love triangle was all around disappointing is not just that Oscar himself, I think, don't have, doesn't have a lot of personality, but I don't really understand why he likes her. Like, because on her side, I can kind of understand it because, like, I don't know, just the way that she's describing him where she's like, oh, like, I hear his voice and I'm imagining what he looks like. And I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, I understand, like, having a crush like that. That makes right. sense to me. But, like, on Oscar's side, he's like, she's just so beautiful and blind. Yeah. And <laughs> like, it's a little weird. I don't know. That is true. I do feel a stronger, like, driving force from Lucilla's side. Like, for her, I get that she was just like, I heard, like, a young man moved nearby. And yeah. <laughs> I just want to, like, hear him and know about him. And it's, like, the infatuation of it all. Yeah. Whereas, yeah, like what he's just like, cool, this beautiful and, girl really likes me. Yeah. Okay. And both him and Nugent, they're, it's, this is what gets me about like insta love is like not just how quick it is, but like the intensity. Like these men are like ready to die for her. <laughs> and I'm like, you guys have known her like a week and a half. Like, I mean, I guess Nugent it's even more extreme, but at least with Nugent, I'm like, okay, at least you are creating some interesting drama (laughs) by being in love with her. Whereas like, I don't know. It's just like the language they use. And like, you know, she is like, she is my light and my life and my everything. And I can't let anything happen to her. And I'm like, what? Like you barely know her. Like what's her last name? (laughs) (laughs) Or middle name, I guess would make more sense, but yeah. It's true. I I couldn't tell you her middle name. Do we know Lucilla's middle name? I don't think so. Hmm. And I know that with, I know that like in older novels, like a lot of times the romance is done like this. Not always, but a lot of times. But it's like, this just doesn't hold a candle to North and South, you know? Yeah. Or like a Jane Austen book or something. I'm like, you. it's possible to write like really amazing romances in this era. Like, what are you doing, Wilkie Collins? Yeah. He just was like, I need you guys to remember, I write sensation novels, murder trials, <laughs> dying in the Arctic. Like, that's the focus. I do love like the entire, like what, one chapter dedicated to the murder trial of oh, yeah. Oscar. And then like they bring it up sometimes with Nugent where Oscar's like, yeah, he can take my girlfriend because he did help me get off from murder. He saved my life. I guess he's earned this. <laughs> he's earned my bride. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, that's pretty generous of him. That's, that's <laughs> nice of Oscar to be like, yeah, he did Is be it? a solid. Is <laughs> it? <laughs> um, but I don't know. I feel like it was skipped over so quickly, too. Like, Right? He was like, on trial for murder. Yes, go, sorry, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go. <laughs> I was just going to say, like, at the beginning, the way they're talking about it seems to reflect what a big deal it is. But then, like, after a few chapters, it's like, yeah, remember that time I was almost hanged? Wild. Like, <laughs> that was wild, man. <laughs> <sighs> okay, I'm striking one of my questions off the record. It's crazily enough, the one that is actually formatted as a question. Because I feel like we've <laughs> talked about the love triangle so much. I know where everyone yeah. stands. I know your thoughts on it. We're good. Yeah. Um, I kind of, again, not a question. <laughs> I just want to discuss, like, as a theme, um, I thought there was an interesting back and forth in this novel about just, like, otherness and Mm -hmm. things that are foreign. Because we have, like, Madame Pratolongo as this outsider who has, like, a very different point of view from everybody. Um, But also the disability and Oscar turning blue and, you know, just, like, so many ways to be other that were very prevalent. So I don't know. 
<laughs> if you have thoughts on that, chime in. No, that's like a really interesting point. Um, what I do like is that the other doesn't really assimilate, if that makes sense. Hmm. The otherness doesn't go away. Mrs. Predalungo is always going to be French, who lived in South America for a while. She like brings it up a lot. Um, <laughs> Every page. By the way, I'm French. I don't know if you knew that. We know, girl, yeah. <laughs> She's like the kid who studied abroad once. <laughs> it's her whole personality. I was in South America. <laughs> so I kind of know what I'm talking about. Like, <laughs> I spent a semester there, so. <laughs> um, and you have um, Lucilla, who is temporarily cured, but remains blind and finds happiness mm -hmm. in that state. Same with Oscar, where he tries to cure one part of his otherness, the epilepsy, and ends up othering himself in a different way um, by turning blue. Um, we should specify, too, that it's medication that turns him blue. Yeah. Just spontaneously. <laughs> <laughs> Just one if, day. <laughs> if someone's made it this far and they didn't read the book, that's yeah. impressive. Yeah. He's entered his Tell us your thoughts era. if you have it. <laughs> What does it oh. sound like this book was about to you? <laughs> yeah, they're picturing like Cookie Monster as her love interest. They're like, he's just blue. I don't know. Yeah, I do love the it idea also... of Cormus Finch. Everything's the same, but Oscar is Cookie Monster. <laughs> <laughs> he's even got a Sesame Street name. Like, oh, he does. <laughs> Wait, but have you guys seen? Because there's like so many like Sesame Street <laughs> things where they'll do like. Les Mis, but it's like learning how to share cookies. <laughs> it's like, I'm just picturing this whole thing with learning the little how to Muppet, share your fiance. And it's very... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Of Sesame Street that gets the most calls from parents. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, Oscar tries to stop his sort of othering and then ends up othering himself even further. Um, Nugent's name is Nugent to me. That's <laughs> not funny. I just, he should not be acting like that with his name Nugent. <laughs> I think it is hilarious that like when Oscar's talking about him, he's like, yeah, my brother Nugent, he's the hot one. And I'm like... <laughs> Yeah, Wilkie, would it have been so hard to swap their names, like, for real? <laughs> Nugent sounds like a dweeb, and Oscar sounds like a hottie artist coming from abroad, like. Yeah. Yeah. A la Oscar Wilde. He yeah. did a bunch of painting stuff in America. Yeah. Um, or, I guess, not painting so much, but. Yeah. Um, I also think that's a very good point, and I think you said it really well, Taylor. There's a lot mm -hmm. of different, um kinds of othering in the book and I just I really I like that we had that scene that we talked about earlier where they see another man and he's like happily married and he's got like his children and like nobody thinks it's weird because mm -hmm. um, I feel like like you said Taylor it's like he doesn't assimilate you know it's not like he never goes outside because of how people treat him he kind of is just like living his life <laughs> yeah um, so I feel like that's a nice kind of counterpoint to like all of the other stuff about like isolation um yeah i think that's i think you really said it all taylor you always so succinctly handle my non-questions thank you for that taylor yes <laughs> it's what like from you <laughs> <laughs> i provide a thought you turn it into a thesis kara goes i agree and then we're good <laughs> you're helping me use my degree thank god <laughs> Lovely. Okay, that is pretty much everything I have, unless anyone has anything that I didn't touch on. But otherwise, we can move on to like favorite quotes, scenes you want to talk about. The Ooh. one specific thing that I would like us to discuss is as much as I enjoyed a lot of Madame Pratolongo as a main character, I like Wilkie Collins would not let me forget that he was a man writing a woman. Like <laughs> the number of times where she's like, women just lie because we get overcome by our lady feelings but oscar didn't know this and i'm like like it was it was honestly comical i think i maybe even took a picture of one near the end but it happened a bunch um please hold <laughs> you know, that's I a really good point kara because when i was listening to the audiobook sometimes madame Prodigal lungo is like 
women be shopping, am I right? And goes, <laughs> okay, the one where she's like, there is no woman in the world who does not feel better when she looks at a shop window. Like, or, or like any any suffering can be partially alleviated by looking at a shop window. And I'm like, okay, okay, Wilkie. I do love window shopping, though. He, he wasn't mean, like, wrong. I he just was shopping. very difficult. <laughs> I think it was more that, like, the way that it was said was, like, not only just every woman everywhere in the history of the world, <laughs> but also the way it was written was very, like, you, you just show us you just show us a store and our tiny little brains are like, what problem? Like, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about the bad things. I saw some muslin. Woo. <laughs> exactly. Um, I, I forgot remember. I can't vote. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't you love when you just go shopping and you forget that you're your husband's property? Like, <laughs> love you show it. me a cute pair of shoes and I forget that I don't have rights. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Have you guys seen the Barbie movie? Yeah. Not yet. I'm so ready. I'm so excited. Oh, Tara. Okay. Is... I'm thinking of that scene, like that scene, like what happens to Barbie Land, and I'm like, that's probably what Wilkie Collins thinks women are. <laughs> <laughs> um. So I, I mean, this is kind of like an example of it, but like she's talking about how angry she was at Nugent, and then I don't know if he like just looks sad in her direction or what and then she's mm -hmm. like and he then he starts melting my heart that is what women are there is a specimen of their sense firmness and self-control like yeah. okay wilkie and that i think is what comes what it comes down to is like that's not a bad turn of phrase but why generalize it to be about all women like why yeah. not make it a yeah. specific character moment yeah yeah Yes. Um, but not all women, okay? <laughs> hashtag not all women, yeah. And it's just that it would happen, it, like, it happened, like, quite a few times throughout the book, is, like, especially because it doesn't really, not that it doesn't make sense with Madame Pradolonko's character, but it was, like, nothing else about her personality mattered as much as, like, <laughs> women. <laughs> like, it just... <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, uh, you were right. Like, I had totally forgotten about, like, the fact that Wilkie Collins is very much a man, and my God, he won't let you forget that. He really won't. He really won't. Um, I was telling Julia before we went live that, like, I actually had other quotes I had saved, but I ended up getting a new phone in the middle of this, so um, I had to, like, dump all my photos somewhere else. <laughs> like, I do have them. They're just not on my computer or on my phone right now. So it's like, I, I'm sure I had more textual evidence of just Wilkie being on his bullshit, but <laughs> I don't have them with me. Fair. I can pull a Nugent. Don't ask me to explain. Just trust yeah. me. <laughs> don't worry about it. Just trust me, bro. Yeah. It's like, have I ever done anything distrustful? It's like, every day, uh, Nugent. Every day. <laughs> very frequently, in fact. Yeah. I still also get over Nugent's self-pity thing at the end. When he gets caught and he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> okay, just name your cute after me. <laughs> no, I will not. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I can't. I'm, I, he's an incel, but I am a Nugent apologist. I can't help <laughs> it. I can't help it. I just, I, I find him and Oscar like equally infuriating in different ways. So I think that maybe makes me a little more sympathetic and also i just like as much as i hate nugent i also hate the things that happened to him like the way that the ending went for him um brutal. i i don't know i i also find it so weird that like he keeps having all of these changes of heart and then it's like as soon as he's like a mile away he's like actually no <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if I steal my brother's fiance. Thanks for trying. <laughs> that is proof that he and Oscar are twins, though. It's the fact that they'll be like, here I go. I'm going to do this thing. And then they're like, I can't do that thing. <laughs> yeah. Like, tell me again, uh, Mr. Collins, how, like, women are the ones who are just so indecisive. And, like, <laughs> take that. 
Um, one of the early quotes that I saved from the book, I think is a great example of probably how like Madame Protolungo was probably supposed to be like a, oh, ha ha, look at this silly lady to the audience. But I was like, she's so right. <laughs> uh, she said, for alas, everything is expensive in this world, including the destruction of tyrants and the saving of freedom. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> go girl. Yep. Love that. Let me look at quotes because once again, I've fallen into the trap of listening to it on audiobook and not no. marking quotes. You're so right, Taylor, because I, I, th I think I already told Kara this, but I started the book physically and then ended up around like the halfway point switching to audio. So a lot of the quotes that I saved are from the first half of the book because I was like, Ooh, and then phew, all over my head. Yeah. I like read the first seven chapters physically, then life events happened. And then I was like, mm, I think it'll go faster with audio. <laughs> and boy, does it. Yeah. I think mine has pictures too. Ooh. I didn't have access to an audiobook because there were a couple times where I was like planning to try one because there were like those sections of the plot where I'm like, I can't. I can't handle you guys right now. Like, please stop. And We've alas, I just had to power through. I don't have pictures. That's cool. Um, yeah, Kara, I also had a very hard time uh, hunting down an audiobook. I ended up listening to one on YouTube. Hey. <laughs> That's where my audiobook was. I was like, hey, it's public domain. It's old enough. Coming this through. is very legal. So I don't <laughs> care. Um, one of the like early Lucilla moments where I still really liked her, um, I saved this quote, um, where it's like she's like crushing on Nuj or not Nugent, if only Oscar. <laughs> um, and then Madame Pertolungo, I think, is the one who says, hush, hush, keep it to yourself until you are sure that he is fond of you. It is the man's place, my love, not the woman's, to own the truth first in matters of this sort. And Lucilla just looks back at her and says, that is very hard on the woman. If they feel it first, they ought to own it first. And I was like, yes. Mm -hmm. So yep. progressive. Yes. I do like that Lucilla's like, you know what? I like that guy. I'll get him. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. give me my man. <laughs> I, I love how, how confident she is, like, from the yeah. beginning. And, like, the part you were talking about, Julia, where she's like, awesome. My new, like, companion is here. Let's go, like, <laughs> let's go take Open a casual little hotties. walk and see if we see any hotties. Like, <laughs> it really delights me that that was, like, their first m meaningful scene together was her being like, oh, great. Come tell me if this boy is as cute as I think he is. Like, that's so, like, a new friend thing. It's just really cute. I'm trying to figure out. I saved a page, and all I wrote about it was LMAO. And I'm like, what happened on this page that was so funny to me? I couldn't tell you. Um, so I do have a quote, and it is something that I enjoyed. It's not anything significant to the plot. It is a Nugent quote. But it's something that I, like, relate to. You know when you complain about something and someone's like, well, if you don't like it, why don't you make one yourself or something? Mm -hmm. Like, if you don't like this book, oh. why don't you write a book yourself? Mm -hmm. um, so it's the, the line, uh, you may scold your carpenter when he's made a bad table, though you can't make a table yourself. I say to you, Mr. Finch, you may point out a defect in the baby's petticoats, though you haven't got a baby yourself. Doesn't that satisfy you? All right, take another illustration. Look at your room here. I can see in the twinkling of an eye that it's badly lit. You have only got one window. You ought to have two. Is it necessary to be a practical builder to discover that? Absurd. Are you satisfied now? No. Uh, and then talking taxes, will uh, tax, he talks about taxes. Uh, you're not in the House of Commons. You're not a chancellor of the, I don't even know that word. It's like French. Yeah. <laughs> Exchequer. But haven't you an opinion of your own about taxation in spite of that? Must you or I be in Parliament before we can presume to see that the feeble old British constitution is at, is at its last gasp? But it's like, yeah, I, it's just an argument on the internet that always annoys me. And I was like, thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, also, I had forgotten. I'm just like skimming through the book to see if there was yeah. things that I remember. I maybe wanted to... <laughs> safe or talk about mm -hmm. i don't think this was one but i'm like oh yeah like r.i.p 
that time that I thought maybe we were gonna get some good, like, actual relationship possibilities with Nugent when she's talking about like I had this horrible nightmare <laughs> like yeah. I dreamed that I was getting married and then like Madame Padalone goes like who was the groom and she says Oscar's brother Nugent <laughs> Dubourg and I was like oh, the drama and then it doesn't matter because like she doesn't <laughs> gosh if only um I did figure out the page that I was laughing at was just um where Oscar is like Oh no, Mr. Finch, my brother has no fortune at all. And his reaction is, what? With three exclamation points. <laughs> it's like, no. And again, that would have even been more interesting for the love triangle if Mr. Finch wanted Lucilla to marry Nugent and she and Oscar just preferred each other. Like, even that would have been something. Yeah. But no. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Here we we have been discussing that how like the hot one is Nugent. Like, Nugent, a name that's almost nougat. <laughs> I, I was thinking nugget. nugget. Yeah. Yeah. What about um? What was what was one of the ones? I feel like it was it was a discussion for a book that we did recently. And it was like, I've always, oh, there's something, yeah. <laughs> it was something so irresistible about a man named, and what was his name? It's from Orlando. <laughs> no, it's the dog. What's the dog's name? <laughs> What's the big dog? The cartoon dog. Oh <laughs> Wait, it was, um, um Marmaduke. <laughs> a crazy name I'll tell you what <laughs> um okay one quote that I saved where I actually was like you know what Oscar sometimes I understand you um was this um like many other shy people he had a perfect mania where any embarrassing circumstances were concerned for explaining himself with difficulty by means of his pen in preference to explaining himself with ease by means of his tongue. <laughs> that was so real. Relatable, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. don't ask me a tough question. I'll write you like a seven paragraph email, but in person, uh, let me follow up with you later. I don't know. Yeah, absolutely Anxiety not. king. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I also, I liked, I just liked the story stuff more when it was like the earlier parts of all of their relationships because like every time we had a moment of like Madame Pratolongo I do think it's a little like ridiculous that she had absolutely no suspicion that the reason Nugent was acting so weird is that he was in love with his brother's fiance like I know we know that because of the synopsis but like it seems right. very obvious but like every time that they would all be like together and she's like wow like Nugent always like walks away from her when she tries to talk to him and he must really not like her and I'm like, mm. <laughs> no. some of these people were too oblivious for their own good i know when they were going to confront nugent near the end of the book like oscar keeps speaking cryptically he's obviously got something in his pocket and they're like man He's really nervous. Yeah. It's Something's like, up with Oscar. He's, he's as, planning on killing him. Yeah. As soon as Madame Pretolon goes like, oh, there's like something under his jacket. I'm like, this, he fu fucking brought a gun. Like, what? <laughs> I don't. And then, and then like he sees Lucilla and he's like, oh, I feel better now. I'm like, so if Lucilla hadn't been there, you just would have shot your brother? Like, <laughs> that's wild. Bento baby. I know, he's got thoughts. I don't know if you can see his little bow tie now. He's so handsome. Okay, I have one last quote that I want to share, and then I'm satisfied. Um, although, wait, I will quickly give a shout out to whatever the scene is on page 282 in my edition, which is like the scene where Nugent's like, I need to leave and get away so I don't interfere with their relationship because 
I was like, it's Nugent apologist hours up in here. I love it. I love it. It was a great scene. <laughs> okay. My last quote that I want to share is another Madame Protolongo quote. She's very iconic to me, uh, where she said, I have a hearty contempt for threats of all sorts and a steady resolution in me to say what I think. Go girl. And especially in this book, somebody, somebody yeah. needs to. <laughs> somebody ought to. <laughs> um, yeah. I also, so I know, I know we've kind of talked about this already, but like the thing too, and I, I don't want to make it sound like, oh, she should have like ended up with Nugent. Cause like Nugent was terrible. He did but very bad things. Yes. The reason that I also dislike Oscar, like one of the, one of the reasons is that like, I I feel like he contributed so much to putting everyone in situations where this happened. Like Nugent tries to leave. Like yeah. he says, like, I need to get out of here. And Oscar's like, no, no, you should stay. And that's it. Like, it's over. That was like, <laughs> and I know that, I know that Oscar didn't have all the facts about like why Nugent wanted to leave, but it just no. like, it's just very emblematic of the like frustration of watching things like almost get fixed like 17 times in this freaking book like <laughs> <sighs> but then at the end when Nugent or um Lucilla and, and Madame Petalungo finally like reunite which I thought their reunion was very sweet I really yeah. like that um when Lucilla is like, isn't it funny? Like, I, I thought I needed so many explanations, but I just sit here with you and I know that it's not true. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> um, so that was lovely. But when Lucilla's like, yeah, um, I had to sneak out of the house. Thankfully, one servant doesn't report on me to him. And I'm like, what? Like, is he locking you up? <laughs> like, Nugent, what? Yep. It just. <laughs> okay, but if we go back to the scene where he's trying to leave. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, like, I feel like, Bento. <laughs> again, very devil's advocate of me. I just feel like there's more going on with Nugent and he knows he's like, I am a menace and none of you should keep me around. Yeah. And like, literally he says in this scene to Lucilla, he's, he's not right. He's like, the kindest thing you could do for me would be to shut me up in a madhouse. The best thing I could do for myself would be to cut my throat. Like, he's like, I am the villain of this story. I'm a bad guy. In your history. Like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm the problem. It's me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he knew. And yeah, he even says like, tread me underfoot like a reptile. My misery is only what I deserve. Like, he calls himself a scoundrel. I feel bad, okay? I do. Bad for I'm sorry. I do. I do feel bad for him. Also, though, very manipulative. He's a terrible <laughs> guy. I feel for him. I do. I mean, I, I, I very strongly hate what happens to him. I don't think that... It's not even, it's not even that I would necessarily, necessarily say, like, Oh, the punishment didn't fit the crime because like the things he was doing like the the way that he was like like you were saying taylor that he cuts her off from everybody else like very sketchy abusive um, energy. and that he's like let's get married before you find out anything about what's really going on and especially because like in this time period it's not like she could just be like oh oopsie i need a, a divorce or an annulment like yeah that was almost permanent so, like, she would have been, like, legally his property. He would also have access to all her money, which I don't think necessarily he's interested in. But it just, the stakes were so much higher in this book for, like, I don't know, people having control over Lucilla's life. So, yeah. I don't even remember where I was going with this. I just, like, I have a lot of feelings. <laughs> I will so say, like, angry. probably from a legal perspective, if they were able to prove that Nugent married right. her under false circumstances. They could probably get the marriage annulled, okay. but it's like right. a huge thing. Yeah, that is a good point. That like the identity thing would matter. But then um, again, they were weird with women, so maybe they're like, mm, "You yeah. should have known that you were actually marrying your blue husband's twin yeah. or blue boyfriend's twin, whatever." Excuse yeah. me, blind girl. You should have known better. <laughs> yeah, Lizzo was like, "Pardon me. Everyone lied to me. How was I supposed yeah. to know anything?" Yeah. Yeah. 
All right. On that <laughs> note, <laughs> sorry. What a time. What'd you say? Use your women's emotions to yeah. <laughs> use use your over overactive lady feelings yeah. to, like, to get out. I'm just a poor blind Miss Finch, and I need to be saved from my marriage. Boo hoo! <laughs> Good work. Can't tell me it wouldn't. Um, what the heck are we reading next, you guys? I actually pulled up the list because I was like, "What are we reading next?" <laughs> Um, because things got a little bit crazy. Oh, uh, okay. oh. huh? I just think I remembered, so I got excited. Okay, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you <should> You're over. <laughs> <laughs> they probably would see yeah. that. <laughs> like, oh. You're not wrong. Fucking rude, Ben. Taylor, do you want to announce the book? Yes. Um, first, I want to see what Julia's guess was. I'm curious. I think it's A Room with a View. Yes, it is. <laughs> Our next book is A Room with a View by Ian Forrester. I'll be hosting. It's a book that I've wanted to read for like years. So I'm really excited. And if I don't like it, I will scream. And that'll just yeah. be the live show for an hour and a half. I will <laughs> scream. <laughs> it's me and Kara trying to get a word in and Taylor just going, ah! <laughs> so my first question for you is ah! <laughs> no i do have very high hopes for it i Me also too. have never read it so. so that'll be let's see probably the last weekend of september of, or like the first weekend of october mm -hmm. i yeah, thought you were going to be sarcastic and be like that'll be the first of november or december like <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, hopefully no more life will happen. Hopefully life is done happening and we will be able to uh, have our live show next month because this was so much fun and I've been looking forward to this for so long. Yes. yes. So true. I know. What a delight. And I'm very excited, um, not to brag or anything, but I do have a copy of A Room with a View that is annotated by Sarah from Sarah's Perusals. That was like the book that we planned on, well, the book in our exchange that she planned on giving to me. And she was like, I have to finish this before you read it for past day classics. I'm like, yes, you do. Or I'll be very angry. <laughs> so I'm going to get like double the reading experience. Yes. So, so cool. Excited. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you to those of you who popped in, those of you watching later. And of course, thank you to Kara and Taylor for all of your insights, your comedy, your presence and your beauty and wit so um thank you for all of that <laughs> your your total contributions to this discussion this evening <laughs> um and yeah we will keep you guys updated on twitter and on instagram um with whenever our live show for a room with a view will be that's a shorter book so nice and um yeah also down below make sure to follow our Twitter and Instagram for the book club, as well as both these co-hosts, because as I said, they are so great. So <laughs> on that note, we're out of here. Bye. <laughs>